cousins it's your girl angela so i'm back again honey with another video now this video that i'm doing today is actually a requested one now i've done this video when i first started my youtube page years ago and these are my homemade buttery buttermilk biscuits okay so listen come on over it's simple it's easy and the lady says she couldn't find it on my page but i promise you it's okay Cousin Angela is here to save the day. I'm going to remake it for you. But if you scroll all the way to the bottom of my page, you'll see that I did do these previously. But, honey, let's get to it because we're going to get these buttery buttermilk biscuits in again, okay? So, y'all come on over. Look, I'm taking off my house shoes, getting all comfortable. But let me put them back on, child. All right. Let me get y'all on down here to see what we're doing. Let me readjust this camera. All right. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to have to readjust. There we go. All right, I hope you all can see this. I hope it comes out. Yeah, there we go, child. Listen. All right, so this is our bowl we're going to use to mix all of our dry ingredients, okay? Listen, so I have some biscuit cutters. Y'all can tell how old-fashioned these things are. These are my biscuit cutters. And then the little spoon holder, but we're going to use a little cake, um, whatever you want to call it, cake spatula. And then these, honey, this is the little... What do you want to call this thing right here? This is the dough blender, okay? You can buy this off Amazon. I'll put a little link in there for you. So listen, this is two cups of self-rising flour sifted already. Now listen, this little bit of flour, I'll just sprinkle as I use it to roll out our dough. That's what this reserved flour is for. I probably have too much in here, but this is just reserved flour to put it on top of our parchment paper. I find that when you're using your baking, parchment paper is the best solution because it doesn't stick. Doesn't mean that you won't need a little bit of flour, but it doesn't make your counter all messy. If you get a little bit on your counter, honey, use some Dawn Extra Platinum dishwasher and hot waters. Get that stuff up. Listen, we have two cups of buttermilk. So what you're going to need for the biscuits are two cups of cold buttermilk, two cups of self-rising flour sifted self-rising flour now i have two whole sticks of salted butter and a half a stick yes because i love me some homemade let me say it again southern homemade buttermilk buttery biscuits okay and come to play with y'all i ain't come to talk to y'all ain't come to argue with y'all this what i'm doing this my recipe we're gonna get at it all right cool beans okay so the first thing cousin angie gonna do let's go ahead Again, this is two cups of self-rising flour sifted. So I'm just going to put it over here in our clean bowl. Make sure your hands are clean before you come in my kitchen. I'm not playing with you, okay? Make sure I get all my money out. I know y'all don't see no flour, but because then you just got to make sure. See, I found a little bit of flour over in there. So I got to go back over here and just, you know, you know, I'd be trying to tell y'all, stop throwing y'all money away. Now I'm going to show y'all how I found a little bit more flour over here because I got to get this, honey. This flour was not on sale. Now y'all know it's the holidays. They racking up people's prices in these stores, honey. Y'all don't heard the full time about inflation. Watch this. See them like that? Mm-hmm. That's why I was trying to tell y'all for the one time. Mm -hmm. Found a little bit of flour. All right, sugar, listen. I set that over there for the dishwasher. Now, listen. I'm going to put that there to the side. I'm going to come on over here and get me a nice, clean knife. Now, listen. I'm going to take this nice, cold butter, and I'm going to open it up. And it's actually workable. It's manageable that you can just put it in there like that down, which I am. Now, keep your clean bag over here for your trash, like Cousin Andrew be trying to told y'all to do. Now, you come over here to play. Listen, we don't even have to cut it up but because we touched it you gotta wash it so we're gonna do it like that there and this butter don't play i literally hadn't too long took it out the freezer oh child it's ready for the one time i think okay cool beans remember always get you a clean trash thing honey and go to the store, ask the little folks for some of them bags. You can use them for trash around your house, child. Listen, so we got two cups of self-rising flour. Um, that's already sifted. You got two and a half sticks of salted butter. So I'm just going to go on in here. Listen, that. you just go on in there and break up that little butter like that, honey. You can get in there like Grandma and them did back in the day, honey, with your fingers. Don't be afraid to get in there, honey. You're going to have to get in there anyway because you got to mix them biscuits up. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Best thing to do, you can have your butter room temperature, you can have it, put it up in the freezer, let it get a little cold, get a little hot, you know. That's the best way to do it, because you want all those little buttery clumps in your biscuit. 
and you have to hear it from me, I ain't the one to gossip. But listen, my stove is heated to 375 degrees. I'm going to cook these for like 12 to probably 12 to mm, 12 to 18 minutes, depending on your stove. Every stove cooks different, okay? It doesn't take long for these biscuits to cook, honey. I like to cook mine to the nice, lightly golden brown on top. And probably about 10 minutes before their time to come out the oven. I do this all the time. 10 minutes before it's time to come out the oven, I always get me a saucepan, a clean soft pan, saucepan, excuse me. And I melt me about a stick of butter. And I prepare my pastry brush so that when my biscuits come out the oven, because Angie's going to show y'all everything, when my biscuits come out the oven, you have your butter nicely melted. Now, you're not going to turn your stove on high, you know, just to melt your butter. You don't want to do that. Because when you turn your stove on high, what happens is, in the midst of you trying to melt the butter, you're actually going to cook it, you know, too fast. You're going to melt it and it's going to turn brown. We don't need no chopped up biscuits looking like they hash browns and stuff. I ain't got time for that. I said I want some homemade southern buttermilk buttery biscuits. I ain't tried to told y'all nothing about some burnt up biscuit colors on top. Mm -mm, I ain't come to play. Now, if you're trying to feed your family, honey, I'm trying to help you. Ain't playing with you, honey. Okay, so listen. Let me show y'all. We got some clumps up there. I'm just gonna put that there. You see those clumps in there? Those the butter clumps. We just got there. The dough, the dough presser, whatever you want to call that thing. What, honey? The dough blender. See how it cut up all the butter in there and them biscuits. And so you just kindly want to go around. You see those clumps of butter in there? That's what's gonna make your biscuits so nice and honey, buttery. Mm-hmm. See there? You still see the big chunks of butter. That's what you want. I ain't trying to play with you. I might just take a little bit more of this flour over here. You know what? I'm going to be stingy because we got two cups of flour already in here. We don't need that much extra. I'm just going to use a little bit there, right there for the one time. So this is going to come out to about two and a half cups of flour. We ain't going to use all this people's stuff. So I'm just going to mix it like that. So we got two and a half cups of flour. Now listen, if you don't want to use two and a half cups of flour, use two cups, okay? I'm just being a little greedy because my family love biscuits. I have my nephew down in Atlanta. He loves some homemade biscuits. Mason love him some biscuits. My sister Yolanda, honey, let me tell you, she make them biscuits. <laughs> he love them homemade biscuits. Mm -hmm. And then they good with some good old um, honey when the biscuits come out. You know what my grandmother used to do? She used to take biscuits when they came out of the oven. She would slice them in the middle. And get her a butter knife and she would put some more butter in the middle. God, they were so good. And back in the day, we had that good old country maple syrup. I'm from Georgia, so I remember the good old country maple syrup grandma used to buy. It used to be called Pine Mountain syrup back in the day, back in the 70s. I searched high and low for that syrup and I can't find nobody selling that syrup called Pine Mountain syrup. I see the alga syrup or whatever you want to call it. I see that. But not that grandma syrup, honey. That old Pine Mountain syrup ain't nothing like it. Okay, so listen. Remember, the recipe calls for two cups of whole, excuse me, two cups of self-rising flour sifted, okay? I just put a half a cup more in here because that's what I wanted to do. But the recipe is only two cups of self-rising flour sifted. Then you have two cups of buttermilk. Then you have two and a half sticks of salted butter. The full description will be below my video, okay? Now, so far, we've used about a cup of buttermilk. So I did that just so I can mix it well. And it's going to be a little sticky when you start to work your dough and, and press it and mix it all together. It's going to be a little sticky. And I have my um, rolling pin on the side on, the, on my stove. It's nice and clean. And I'm going to tell you something about that rolling pin. Now, when I wash my rolling pin and I get it nice and washed up um i take paper towels clean paper towels and dry mine off instead of a dish towel i take clean paper towels and dry it off and then once it's dry with the paper towels i put it on top of my stove overnight and let it air dry right on top of paper towels and then the next day i get me a piece you know i'm the reynolds wrap girl i get me a piece of nice clean reynolds wrap foil and wrap it the reason why i say that is because you know, it collect dust. Stuff be collecting dust, honey, when you're around your house. So you want to keep your stuff nice and clean. You want to preserve it. So that's why Cousin Angie does that. Yeah. Be right back.
Okay, everyone, so I have my bench scraper. Now, how I keep this clean, you see I have a nice Ziploc bag, no air in it. So when I wash it and I hand dry it with a paper towel, I do too leave this on top of the stove for a couple of hours. And then I take a paper towel, clean it again. I put it in a Ziploc bag and I'll fold the bag like this, right? Like this, get the air out of it, and then I'll fold it over. You see there's no air in there. That's how I preserve it, keep it clean, all right? And I'll put a link beneath the, um, below the video. See, you don't have to worry about anything. This is a bench scraper, all right? You don't have to worry about anything, honey. The cousin Angie put this right here for one minute. All right, so listen, we're going to go to the next step, okay? We're going to go to the next step, which is we're going to pull our dough out onto our parchment paper. Listen, we didn't even use all of the buttermilk. Look at there, okay? We used about a cup and a half, all right? So now... You're going to end up getting your hands dirty. That's okay. That's part of that process of making the biscuits, okay? So now what I'm going to do is put out just a little bit of, uh, what do you call this, flour here. And the reason why we're pouring out a little bit of flour here onto our parchment paper is just so that the dough won't stick. Now, if I did not have the parchment paper on top of my counter, and I'm not saying that flour or something won't get on my counter, that's okay. But I still could put flour down. But you want to put some flour down to prevent the biscuit dough from sticking everywhere. Okay? So just use, listen, if you don't have a cake spatula, it's okay. Use a spoon. Use a um, buttermilk, a butter knife. Listen, we're going to call it a thing a buttermilk knife. A buttermilk, I mean not buttermilk. Child, y'all know what I'm trying to tell you. A butter knife. All right? See, it's going to be sticky like I told you. But I'm going to show you how easy this is going to turn around in just a minute. Because you have to mix that flour, put a little bit all over, and it'll prevent it from being sticky. So prepare yourself to get your hands dirty. A little bit more flour. It's all coming together. Look at that. May have sticky points here and there, but that's okay. Okay. All right. Now, here comes the rolling pin action, okay? We're going to take a little bit of our flour. You want to surface around the rolling pin, okay? And you're going to roll this on out. Don't worry about nothing. We're just rolling it out at this point. See how smooth that is? Nothing has to be perfect. At this point, I'm just rolling the dough out so that I can kind of roll it out and then flip it over. Not flip it over, fold it in half, should I say. Remember, I talked to you about you want to roll it out a couple of times. Take a bench scraper. And if you don't have a bench scraper, use a butter knife or a sharp, sharp knife, like a chef knife. Okay. And you want to take it and simply, now that was my first time rolling it out. So I'm going to lift it. Okay. Don't be afraid. You want to lift it. See, you're making layers. So as the biscuit is cooking, the dough is rising, and you're going to have different layers of your biscuit, okay? That's what this is. So we're going to repeat our process two or three more times. Get all your extra flour. You need all that flour you can get. Don't throw your money away, honey. I'm trying to tell you about throwing your money away. I need all my flour because, um, yeah, I'm going to need the flour. Okay. Be sure to roll it down. Get all your stuff off. Okay. I can smell the butter in those biscuits. Jesus, have mercy. You can smell that buttermilk in those butter. Mmm. Child, I can't wait that these come out. Uh, sprinkle me a little bit more flour on top. We're going to repeat our process probably one or two more times. This is Now listen, also I want to say this. If you do not have a rolling pin... Think about what grandma and them did back in the day, honey. When they get you a clean, nice clean glass out that, out that uh, kitchen, honey, make sure it's nicely clean. 
nicely cleaned, fresh, clean, dried off with paper towels, and you put your little bit of flour around the side, and you get the rolling. Now, if you don't put flour, I'm gonna, re you know, I'm gonna tell you, if you don't put flour around the sides, it's going to stick. Your dough is gonna stick. All right, and that's not what you want. All right, because then you want you to have some good old taste and honey. Homemade Southern buttermilk buttery biscuits. I ain't come over here to play. I'm trying to help the children, honey. You come over here, you're going to eat. I don't know what we're going to do over there. We ain't got time to play. If I come in your house and it ain't down the right way, honey, I'm going to have to leave, honey. I'm going to have to come on home and eat. I'm trying to help, try to help the cousins, honey, because the cousins said they want to eat. So Cousin Angie, trying to help the cousins. Look, look at there, okay? See that? So I'll probably do this one more time. Fold it in half. See how easy that is? Fold that in half. Sprinkle you a little bit more flour. You a little bit sticky, it's okay. Sprinkle just a little bit of flour. It's going to be all right. Take your ends, fold them up. And when you lift it, you find that's a little sticky. It's okay. Just sprinkle. See there? See what I'm doing? All right, like that. Take this in, fold it in. Look at there. Beautiful. And there's clumps of butter. You can fill all the clumps. All right, so after this next time, then I'm going to um, begin to cut out the dough. Now, again, I have my oven set on 375 degrees. Okay. All right. So let's, let's get with it. Let's get to it, honey. Sprinkle just a little bit more. God, it smells so good. Make sure it's nicely floured. I'm going to push this back out of my way some here. See how beautiful it comes out. Right. So at this point, I'm gonna take out my cookie cutter, or oh, uh, I say a cookie cutter. Jesus, what the heck? These is biscuit cutters. I'm sorry, guys. Make sure cousin Angie ain't misleading you, honey. Let me show you what it say, honey. Biscuit cutter. I just said the wrong name, and it comes in different sizes. Just gonna show you the set I have. They come in different sizes, but I'm gonna use the large size. Okay. I'll wash these off because I touched them. All right. Now we're going to take this and make sure we get flour all around it because you don't want it to stick to your biscuits. Okay. So I'm going to, let me put this in here. Let me get my cooking pan. Now I have a Cuisinart 9 by 13 and that's what we're going to be using here. Our Cuisinart 9 by 13. All right. Lord, let me get my towel because I don't want over here. Got flour. Just what your little bag for right here. All right. Now I have a little trick that I'm gonna do to mine. I will give I will give this suggestion to everybody. Excuse cousin Angie for one minute. You know I'm the Reynolds girl. So when you're baking, get the Reynolds wrap parchment paper. You can find this at I don't know your local grocery store. I'm not sure if they sold it. Um, if you have a Kroger's near you, you can find it there. I do know they have it at Walmart. Don't use anything else. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that not to be funny, but because I found that when I brought another particular parchment paper, my daughter and I felt, smelt something burning in the oven. And when we went in there, the parchment paper that I had purchased, not this one, 
but another brand, it was smoking. And then when I read the box, it wasn't able to be used for baking or in the oven. This is Reynolds wrap. You know, I'm the Reynolds girl. I ain't trying to play with y'all for the one time. This is safe to be used in the oven up to 425 degrees. Reynolds wrap, honey. I use Reynolds wrap nonstick heavy duty foil, Reynolds wrap parchment paper. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't trying to go down there to the Dollar General. I ain't trying to, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm the Reynolds girl. That's all I can tell anybody. My husband and kids will tell you, she'll use nothing but Reynolds wrap. You just lay that in your pan, just like that. And it ain't got to be pretty. You're just going to put your stuff on top, okay? And we're just going to put our biscuit cutters in there, just like that. Just like that. And I'm going to show you how they look around the side. Look at there, okay? And you got to make sure that when you're placing them in your pan for baking, your biscuits, make sure they're touching. That's one thing I tell people. Make sure, and I'm going to leave that one alone because I don't want to mess it up. Your stomach, just pat it off if you feel like you got a little bit too much. Any questions, you know, you can always leave me a message like you all do. Um, and I will respond right back to you, okay? Just using the bench scraper. Like I said, if you don't have one, just... Use a butter knife. That's the next best thing. All right. If you have another baking pan that you have on the spare, it's nice and clean. I see what we got in here. One, two, three, four, five. So we got 15 biscuits in here. And we still have enough for some more. So Cousin Angie is going to put these in the oven. And um, like I said, my oven is on 375. And um, I'll come back to you guys as soon as these are done. Okay? See you soon. All right, cousin. So the first set of biscuits are in the oven. I have an idea. We're going to do it the old school way like Grandma did, honey. We're going to get down to the skillet. I don't look. I don't got flour all down in the skillet. Let me get a napkin. Oh, Jesus. Remember when Grandma made them biscuits, she had her a black cast iron skillet. Well, honey, that's what we about to do. We don't, we're not using the black cast iron today, but we're going to make us... We're going to get some parchment paper. And Cousin Angie going to put some in the skillet. That's how the, hey, that's how Grandma them did it. That way I ain't got time to wait. Just hold me a little piece of small parchment paper. Put it right there in my skillet. Put these biscuits. Hold on, let me bring y'all down here with me. I forgot about my cousin. All right, honey, listen. Let her go. Uh-huh, see, got me a little piece of parchment paper. I'm going to show you what I did. I took a little piece of... That. I got foil down in my pan, so that's okay. I'll wash it when it come out. I'm still dropping foil. I mean, dropping flour, not foil, flour. Just dropping flour everywhere. That's okay. It's going to have to be washed when it come out anyway. So I fold me over a little small piece of parchment paper. Put your biscuits on on in there. Try to make sure you can get them to touch. Okay. Okay. All right. My grandmother used to take what was left of the dough and she would make a gigantic biscuit and that would be her baby. Nobody got that big biscuit but Granny. She reminded me of my husband's grandma. Oh my God, I love his grandma. She was so sweet. That lady made me a homemade lemon cake. There's something about the elderly people. They When they bake, you notice they don't use baking pans. They use cast iron for honey. I remember when I met my grandmother-in-law, she got in that kitchen at 10 something that night. We were down in her summer home in the Carolinas, and this woman got in there by hand, no box cake. This woman got in there by hand with a black cast iron skillet. I kid you not, my husband will tell you, made me a lemon cake from scratch. She was so nice. She reminded me of my grandma. I love his grandma. I love my grandma. Love, love, love that lady. All right. So I'm going to take this one that's left, and this should give us two more. This should give us two more, and then we're done, cousins, until they come out the oven. Again, my oven is on 375, and they'll cook for like, hmm, Probably anywhere from 15 to, I don't know, 
20 minutes. You just have to keep your eye on them. I like mine lightly golden brown because when they come out the oven, you're going to put that uh, melted butter on there with your pastry brush. And I'm going to walk you all through that. And you're going to have a beautiful finish to your biscuits, I promise you. Okay. Let me put a little bit of flour around here. It's starting to stick. I forgot about that. All right. So I'm just going to roll this out now. There we go. It's not sticking. Okay. Now, if you find that when you make another biscuit or you feel like you're close to the end of making your biscuit and you don't think you can get, like, one or two out, you know, of the dough that's left, then I can understand if you got rid of the, got rid of the remaining um, biscuit of uh, dough. I could understand. You see how easy that was? And I'll just kind of bring my sides together to kind of measure them all the way around. That's what I'm doing here. So again, if you don't have a dough scraper, then it's okay. Just use a butter knife, like I said. Okay, so this will com complete my demonstration here. See there? All right. And I'm just going to scrap that. And maybe I can. Hmm. Yeah. Everything I've touched. Now, my daughter, when my oldest son was living at home, they used to fight for the this little remainder right here. This little remainder of the dough right here. To see who got the last big biscuit. I did it just like my grandma did. Save the very last of the dough if you can make you a big biscuit. So since my oldest daughter, my youngest daughter, she don't care about the big biscuit. She just want to get the biscuits. She don't care about the biscuit, big biscuit. But Lord, my oldest daughter, I don't know what it is with her and the big biscuit. She'll eat all the biscuits. That girl loves some biscuits. See how big that is? So let's see if I can make some room here. Again, you want to make sure they're touching. Okay. I'm going to make sure the biscuits are touching when they're baking. All right. All right. Perfect. All right. I'm trying to get them in here, Jesus. Yeah, this will fit. Look at there. It will fit. Look at there. All right, cousins, I'll be back. All right, cousins, so our Southern homemade buttermilk buttery biscuits are done, honey. They out the oven, honey. Let's get to it. Let me bring y'all on over here, okay? This is the first batch. Let me let me go ahead and bring the cousins on home. All right, so listen, I'm transitioning from this pan to this pan. I got my melted butter. I put two sticks in here because, of course, I have more biscuits coming out the oven. And they're right behind these, honey. So I'm going to do these right in front of you all. This pan is seriously hot. I got two sticks of salted melted butter in here. Listen, if you don't have a pastry brush, use a spoon. Okay? Make sure you butter these biscuits. I'm sorry about that, guys. Okay, see how beautiful they look? And I melted this butter 10 minutes before they were supposed to come out. I just turned my stove on low and just started melting my butter. Just like that. And it's okay if you drop a little bit in here, honey. It's just going to make more butter on the bottom of them biscuits. Just like that. Mmm, they smell so good, too. Okay. So I'm going to take the rest of those biscuits. I'm going to brush them over one more time with some more butter. Just like that. Get some more in here. I'll show you how they look. They're hot. See that? Biscuits, honey. Yes, Lord. Look at that. Biscuits. Oh, they're hot. Jesus, have mercy. Oh, these biscuits, honey. Look at these biscuits. Whew, these things are smoking hot. You all are going to love these daggone biscuits here. Yes, Lord. You're going to love. Set my butter back to the side. All right, cousins. 
let me know what you think about my southern buttermilk buttery biscuits give me a thumbs up please share this video and share my page and happy holidays to everyone from my family to yours happy holidays thank you for supporting me we're almost at 6,000 subscribers thank you so much I love you guys and I appreciate all your support happy holidays to everyone stay safe most of all stay warm somebody needs a call from somebody somebody needs an arm of love we all go through it even myself so pick up the phone tell somebody you love them call somebody you can make them laugh and um, have a happy holidays to everybody Bye-bye.